Hill, November 21st, uh, approximately about 8.30. Uh, my narcotics officers were doing a uh, traffic stop on a, another vehicle. I was responding on Saluda to them. They were on the corner of Oak Street and Saluda. Um, while en route to them, uh, I was behind a white Cadillac. Uh, once the Cadillac and myself approached Foot Street, I observed the car just abruptly pull out in front of the Cadillac. Cadillac had to jam on brakes a little bit. I went around the Cadillac and initiated my uh, blue lights. From Foot Street, the vehicle took me to the corner of Oak Street where my officers were at. They made a right on Oak Street. They kept past my officers. Um, at that time, <clears throat> I noticed the vehicle that we weren't going at a high rate of speed. We are going uh, about 40 to 35 miles an hour. Um, I kept hitting my horn. My sirens were, uh, excuse me, my blue lights were still activated. I got on the radio and asked the lieutenant over the narcotics unit to send me some more backup. Um, we made a left on Crosby Street and we finally went to a stop at uh, the end of Crosby and McClure. Once we got to, the, to that stop, uh, my officers were on scene for a backup. I felt the need to do a felony traffic stop, which is a, you know, uh, a serious traffic stop, which we do, we normally do for armed robbery, bank robberies, murder suspects, and vehicles that won't stop to, for, for, the blue, for uh, blue lights and sirens. Um, I didn't know what was in the vehicle. The vehicle had a uh, kind of a dark tint to it. It was 8.30 at night. Also in that area uh, is well-known gang members for E-Block. Uh, in light of the situation that's been going on in the, in the city now, and, you know, tensions are high with the gang members, um, I felt the need for the safety of myself and my officers to do a felony stop, which allows us not to approach the vehicle, get the, uh, the, the occupants to come to us. And did you know uh what color the driver was? No. Did you know what color the passenger was? No, sir. So know. the decision to pull the persons over had nothing to do with what color no, they were, right? No, the decision right? to pull them over because they did a moving, uh, was driving erratic and did a moving violation on a uh, saluter. And then uh, coupled with not stopping with, you know, stopping to my commands of the blue lights and the siren. Normally, uh, let me back up by saying a felony traffic stop is a universal um, uh, policy. That means if uh, one of my officers were to go to California and jump in the car with an officer that they've never seen before, they would do the same uh, actions on a felony traffic stop as we do here in South Carolina. Once we got those uh, subjects back to the back of my car, uh, I immediately identified both of them. There, there are two twins. I'm not going to release their names uh, due to their age, um, but they are old enough to drive. Um, I met them previously when I visit uh, the high schools. Um, they're well mannerable. Based on their uh, previous uh, pro uh, contact with them, I feel the deem uh, to they, they're not a threat. They're not in any gangs or anything. So I, I instruct my officers to really uh, take off the, the handcuffs. Once we took the handcuffs off, I questioned them, you know, and asked them why did the driver. I was trying to talk to the driver and ask him why did he come off of Foot Street so abruptly. Um, I advised them the seriousness of not stopping to a, a blue light. Um, and uh, I also asked the passenger, uh, did he have a cell phone? He, he instructed me, he had it in the car. My, I myself went to uh, retrieve the, the, um, retrieve the, the uh, cell phone, and once I got the cell phone, I instructed him uh, to call his father. Once he called his father, he told his father he was on a traffic stop, and uh, I then spoke with the father. The father requ requested to, to come out. He wasn't too far from uh, the incident location. I normally don't do this, but uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to start uh, uh, a little movement. I call it a movement in light of things that's happening in Chester. I'm trying to get the parents uh, educated on how to respond to officers when they, when they approach their kids, these kids out here. Um, so I did invite him to come. To come. He, he took about five or 10 minutes, and once he got on scene, I explained to him, I showed him my lights were still activated. I uh, even opened my door and, and uh, hit my sirens and stuff to show him how loud the sirens are. So, uh, you know, it's obvious that these, these young men uh, should have saw my blue lights and heard my sirens. Um, I also uh, advised him that uh, during a felony traffic stop, we do have our guns out. And uh, I explained to him also that, um, that his kids were not in arm, arm's way, you know, far as uh, Point guns at them. The, car, the guns were uh, trained at the at the vehicle itself. Challenging the vehicle once we got them back to to a safe spot behind us. Um, he was uh, acceptable to that. He scolded his parent, uh, his kids uh, a little bit, which is normal. And uh, 
they, everybody was released. I mean, there were no charges based on uh, knowing knowing these kids and knowing that they're not uh, uh, troublemakers or gang members. You know, I, I gave them the benefit of the doubt, which I could have wrote a, uh, a traffic ticket and uh, charged them and arrest them for a felony for failure to stop for blue lights, which I didn't. He stopped, let down the window. They was waiting on the police to come to the vehicle. But he said, he said, Dad, the police never did come. And I think he must have been waiting on backup or whatnot. And um, so he's, he said he got the command to stick your head out the window. So he stuck his head out of the window, head and arms. And uh, they told him to reach back into the vehicle, turn off the engine. So he turned off the engine, put the key on top of the vehicle, put the key on top of the car. So he told him to get, uh, uh, get out of the car with his hands up and walk towards them slowly. He did that. Was he asked to walk towards them slowly backwards or forwards? Forwards first. Forwards first. And while all this going on, they had guns drawn on. The police chief and several of his officers um, had guns drawn on while he walking towards the chief. and. Um, he got the command to turn around, walk backwards. And he said, yes, sir, walking backwards. And once he got so close to the chief and the other officer, the officer grabbed his arms, put him in cuffs, patted him down, took all his contents out of his pocket, uh, put it on the back of my trunk, okay? And then the chief asked him, was anyone else in the vehicle? He said, yes, my twin brother. And he said, so, it, Gave him the same commands, hands up, walk towards slowly, turn around, and then another cop, police officer, which I think it was Major Gilmore, um, put the cuffs on Caden and did the same thing, took the contents out of his pocket, put it on the back of the trunk. Went through the, the, the book bags, the wrestling bags, and searched my vehicle. So one of the officers, I found out that he knew me from a few years back. He found some of my information in the vehicle. I don't know if it was my insurance card, registration, or whatnot. And then he walked, he stopped searching. He walks towards the chief and my boys and the other officers. He said, um, are y'all Carlos boys? And they said, um, yes, sir. Say yes, sir, again. And uh, he looked at another officer. This comes from my boys, my boys telling me this. And they said, he's, he looked at the other officer and said, oh, hell. That's his, his exact word, he said, oh, hell. And then I think they started conversating um, about what went on, you know, the, the, the officers. Then they took the cuffs off of them. I, I'm, I'm upset with the chief because it's about right and wrong for me. It's not about black and white. Because chief is black. But I feel that the chief is arrogant dismissive and egotistical because you if they did commit a, a traffic violation he didn't write him a ticket guess what he didn't even look to see if they had any license or registration because their license and registration and permits were on top of on the back of my trunk they didn't even look for that because that's not what they were looking for. They were looking for something else. And it wasn't no license or registration. They didn't get consent to write, um, search my car. They put, um, they put cuffs on my boys. Um, for no reason. And they had guns drawn on them. I want to see the video cam, dash cam, body cam. And guess what? My boys are pursuing. They want to see it because they say, Dad, this guy was so disrespectful. His attitude, he had a, he had a bad attitude. And I don't think he should be the, the top cop in Chester, in the city of Chester. And see, a lot of people, you know, try to bring in it's black and white. Not for me. For me, it's right and wrong. This guy was wrong. This, this chief was wrong. 